Hi, my name is Lori Gibson and I'm the Education and Community Engagement Manager here at the Metal Museum. Today I'm going to show you all how to do a rivet. It's a way to connect two or more pieces of metal together without using heat. So what we will do is create what's called a rivet where you put it into the metal and then you upset the edges so it creates tension that keeps those two sheets together. It's a really good process when you're using materials that may be heat sensitive like acrylic or sometimes people will, I've seen people put fabric in between pieces of metal and then connect the two pieces of metal or if you have two metals that are not, that do not work well together when heat is applied. Um, they also have just a different aesthetic so you might just choose to use a rivet just for the aesthetic purposes. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and we, I will show you what to do. So like I said, it's a pretty simple process. It requires minimal tools. What I have here, I have my two pieces of copper. I have a steel plate, my drill press, which I used to have a small tabletop drill press. If you have a dremel or a flex shaft, you can also use that instead. Um, I'm using 16 gauge wire to make my rivet. I have a right size drill bit to go with that, which is a size 55. Um, I've got some flat pliers, I've got three needle files, I have a flat needle file and then a square and a triangle. Then I also have a couple different types of hammers, some that we're going to use for texturing and then I have a riveting hammer to actually set that rivet in place. I also have a raw line because sometimes when you texture your metal it will start to curve on you and we want our metal to be nice and straight and flat so we can get a really tight um, connection with that rivet. So have some wire cutters, a sharpie, a center punch so we can mark where we want to drill, and then some tape. So if you look behind me here over my right shoulder, this is what is called a raised or a plain rivet. It is above the surface. So when we put that rivet in and we hit it, it's going to upset that edge and it's going to stay above the surface. Over my left shoulder over here, it's what is called a flush rivet which means that we are actually going to create a bevel into the steel sheet, or copper sheets. And when we upset that edge, it's gonna go below that surface, and then we can file off that top and make it nice and smooth. Most people will choose to do a flush rivet if they want a really nice, smooth, sanded surface, or if it is a piece of jewelry that's going to be against clothing or against your skin, just so it doesn't cut or scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have my two pieces of metal here. I'm going to texture them because with your riveting process, that should be your last step. So anything that you want done to the metal beforehand, you should go ahead and do. So if you want to texture it, patina it, um, stamp it, wax it, any of that stuff, I always do that first. That way that riveting is that very last step. So the only Place that, that might not apply is if you do that flush rivet on the back where you have to file that and sand it down. You'll have to do that, of course, after the metal set. So, real quickly, I'm just gonna put my metal in the steel plate, use this nice ball peen hammer, and create a nice hammered texture over my metal. So now that I've got my texture on my metal, it has warped a little bit on me. So I'm going to put it on a steel plate, use my rawhide, put it face down and just kind of real gently push that arc of the metal back down so it's nice and flat. layer by itself before I attach it to the second layer. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my first piece, which is this little square piece, and I'm going to take my sharpie and mark anywhere that I want my rivet to go and where I'm going to drill. I think for this one I'm going to do three rivets. When you're doing rivets, if you want it to stay in place, it needs to have a minimum of two. If you do only do one rivet, then that's just going to let it swing and move. 
So if you want that those two pieces to really stay in place and not swing around and move on you, you need to have two rivets, minimum. You also want to make sure that your rivet is not too close to your edge. If you get it too close to the edge when you go to drill it, that drill bit can actually break through and then um, you're going to have a little weird spot that doesn't look right and also that the rivet will stay in. So I'm going to take my center punch, just a sharp piece of metal here so that will point. I'm going to set it on my sharpie mark where I want it to drill and then very lightly just tap it to create a little seat for where my drill bit is going to go. I'm doing that so when I go to drill the copper, that drill bit doesn't start to skate across and scratch up the surface that I just did that nice texture to or have the nice thing the texture to. So by just doing a really light center punch, it creates a little divot or a little seat for that drill bit to go into and also helps from the drill bit breaking. So I'm ready to go ahead and drill these three spots. Um, Notice I do have my hair put back and I do my safety glasses. Anytime that you're using the drill press or drilling metal, you want to make sure that you cover your eyes and be safe. I'm going to line it up. Make sure that the drill bits line up with my center punch mark. Turn it on and then just do all those things. I'm going to do that for each one. So once I get those, those holes drilled on the first layer, I'm going to take my flat needle file and I'm going to file off what's called the burr on the back of that drill hole. It's just a little piece of metal that's kind of standing up straight from the drill bit going through it. And I want to make sure that that's not there when I go to rivet these two pieces together. If it is there, it's going to um, not allow for a nice tight fit. So now that my burrs are on, I'm going to now take my tape, and you can use masking tape or just have some blue painters tape here. And I'm actually just going to tape these two pieces of metal together. Precision is really important when you're doing rivets, if, especially since we're working with multiple contact points. If this shifts on you and you have and your drill holes aren't lining up, then you're not going to be able to put those rivets and you're gonna have extra marks in your metal. So you wanna make sure that you get it where you want it and then tape it down nice and tight so it's nice and secure. Don't worry if your tape covers your drill hole, you should be able to find it pretty easily. I'm just going to take my center punch and put through that bottom one. All right, so now I'm ready to drill my second layer. So I'm going to have these two pieces taped together. And then I'm going to use the first layer as a guide as to where my drill bit is going to go. So I don't actually need to center punch my second layer because that top piece of metal is actually going to keep that drill bit in place.
I've got the holes drilled on both layers. I'm going to take the tape off and then use the filet to take the burrs off the back of that also. So one important thing when you're using your drill press or flex shaft is to hold that metal nice and tight. And if the drill bit does catch it and it starts to spin, just let it go until you turn the drill off. You don't want to try and catch that spinning metal with your hand. Before I get to actually setting the rivet, this is where I'm going to do the step needed to make that flush rivet so it's nice and smooth. On the back of my second piece, so the piece that's going to be sitting against the skin, I want to create this little bevel right here that comes down into the metal. So I'm going, I'm going to use a square needle file. So it's a needle file that is a square shape, which means it has four corners, and I'm going to put it in and just give it a quick couple of turns to create that bubble. I know other people do it different ways, and this is just the way that I was taught, and that works well for me. You really only need one or two turns. If you do it too much, that bubble gets too big, and then when you go to file it off, you can sometimes see that space around it. So now that I've got the burrs cleaned off and that bevel set, I'm actually ready to start the riveting process. So, like I said, I'm using 16 gauge copper wire. You want to make sure that your wire and your drill bit are the right size and the right fit. If the drill bit is too big and that wire slides through too easily, it's not going to stay in place when you go to upset that in and it's going to fit. So a really tight fit is really important. And if you're doing multiple points of contact, sometimes it's nice to go ahead and just put that rivet in place before you actually set it. So this is a nice tight fit, which is really good. So if I have to kind of work that copper wire down through that hole, which I'd rather have it that way than for it to be too loose because this way I know that it's going to be a nice tight fit and stay in place. I usually, as you can see, use a longer piece of wire to put that rib rivet through initially. Um, but now I'm going to go through and cut it so it's nice and short. And you really, do not want a long piece of metal. Ideally, your rivet should extend above and below your piece. Only the height of half of the diameter of your wire. So it's really just barely above that surface on both sides. And I have just found it easiest that instead of trying to use and maneuver a little piece of metal to cut a longer piece, put it through and then cut it down and file it once it's already the other thing I'm going to do is very carefully, I'm just going to put it on my steel plate, take my flat file and go over the ends of that wire just to make sure it's nice and flat so when I go to set it, any point created by the wire cutters will not fold over. It just spreads out evenly. Alright, so I have that one in place, the right height, and what I'm going to do is before I actually hammer it and set it, I'm going to take this other just short piece and slide it through another point just to help keep everything in line. So now I'm going to set the rivet and this can actually be the part that's a little bit tricky. I'm going to use this little riveting hammer. It's got a nice small head so I have a very... so I'm, there's a less risk of me hitting the top of my metal and marring it since I'm working and trying to hit such a small surface. So when you're starting out, this part might be a little tricky, it's still even tricky for me and I've been doing this for several years, is that you don't want to set this metal down and push it directly to the steel plate. You want to kind of balance it just above 
so that wire is touching the steel plate, but not the bottom piece of your project. Some people will take a flat sheet of metal and put it under there to help balance it. Sometimes a friend, if you have a friend or a studio mate, they can help you out here. But what I like to do is just balance that wire, give that top one just a couple taps, <coughs> not hit it too hard, just enough to start to flare that top piece of the wire. Flip it over, do the same thing. And then I just keep working back and forth. And you start to see those come together. So ideally, your rivet is just above the surface. It's not much wider than your original piece of wire. So now that I've got that first one in, I'm going to go ahead and repeat that same process for the other two and then I will file off the back to create that flush rivet. Okay, so I have all of my rivets set. Now the last, one of the last things I'm going to do is take my flat file and I can feel on the back of this piece those rivets that are raised up. So I'm going to take my file and file those down and I wanted to get it to the point where it just those completely disappeared and since I'm using copper wire with copper the copper plate they should completely disappear so you can't even see them um, which is what we call a hidden flush rivet if I was using brass or silver I could still file it, still file it down but there would just be like a really nice color or a little bit nice silver dot or brass dot. So I have my back file nice and flat so you can't even see where those rivets went in anymore. Last thing I'm going to do is drill a metal hole at the top of this where the bail will go through to attach it to a necklace. File that off and then stand the back and then my rivet and then will be done. So there is the finished product. It's a nice little pin that has two pieces of metal. You can see the little rivets at the top. Actually, I'm gonna hit the top of those rivets just to keep those off too. In and you can see on the back it looks nice and clean, completely sanded because the back of your jewelry is just as important as the front of your jewelry. And there we have it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little something. Hope to see you at the museum.